glory and praise to Jesus give for his redeeming grace. Clap your hand, all ye people. Shout with the voice of triumph. Ah, oh, come on. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. And no matter where you find yourself physically, God is there. No matter what you're going through, God is there. He is with you. He is with us in this service. And even though Bethel, we're not in person uh, worshiping together, we are together in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus declared that where two or three would gather together in my name, I would be there. God is where you are. And we thank God for another opportunity to worship and praise him in spirit and in truth. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we pray that this service would be a magnificent and mighty blessing into your life. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're going to sing a new song, for we know that God has done marvelous things. Amen. At this time, Sister Katrina Staples is going to lead us in our invocation. She won't be praying by herself. You'll be praying with her, followed by a scripture lesson from, by the Reverend Haroline Shackelford and a musical offering by Brother Christopher Wilson and company. God bless you. Good morning. All right. My Bethel Church family, friends, visitors, let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for allowing us to come for your throne one more time, Lord God. And we come collectively, God, giving you the praise and glory and honor that's due to your name. Yes, yes. You are worthy, God. We thank you yes, yes. for serving a living God, yes. not a dead God, not a God of idols, but a God who is living and who cares for each and every one of us you, and who knows us individually, Ooh, who knows us, yes. the hair on our heads, who knows us yes. in the midnight hour. You know us, Lord God, and you know your purpose for our lives. You, you didn't just throw us together, but we were fearfully and wonderfully made by you for your purpose, Lord God. So we come, God, thanking you for who you are, the great I am, the God who is excellent, the God who loves us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for this day, this wonderful day that you put together, Lord God, not yeah. this morning, God, before the foundation of this earth. So we thank you, Lord God. Yeah. We thank you that we can come and we can say that we have not done everything right. My, my, my. We can say that we have sinned, God, my, my. through thoughts and words and deeds, Lord God. We can come, Lord God, and we can confess our humanity that yeah. we are weak, Lord God. My, my but thou art strong. We yes. thank you, Lord God, yes. that when we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and yes. cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. Thank you, Lord God, not just for forgiveness, but that you take our sins and you break it yes. in half and you cast it yes. as far as yes. the east is from the west. Yes. And we thank you, Lord yes. God, Lord God, we, we come, Lord God, and we, we say, Lord God, that we have situations in our lives that we need you yes. to, to intervene, Lord God. Yes. We need your wisdom and your yes. understanding, your knowledge. We need your direction, Lord God. Yes. And so we thank you, Lord God, that you are going to, to, to meet our needs, Lord God, not just the needs that we know about, but even this afternoon, yes. even tomorrow and the days to come, there are going to be situations, Lord God, and you're going to be there for us, and we thank you, Lord God. 
Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that as the, the word comes forth, Lord God, yeah. that it will come, Lord God, with, with our hearts open to receive and to do, Lord God, and to receive and, and to allow you, God, to move among us, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for his life. We thank you for using him, Lord God, to impart words in us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, to today, Lord God, that we are going to celebrate what Jesus did for us yes. on the cross, God. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us life. Thank you, Jesus, for being obedient to your Father, even unto death for us. And so, God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not even begin to thank you of the things that we know about, Lord God. Yes, yes. So we give you praise. We give you praise out of our human lips, Lord God. Yes. Out of our human hearts, we give yes. you thank you. Yes. And we say, in Jesus' name, amen. This morning, our scripture lesson is found in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, and we'll be reading the 13th through the 18th verses, and I will be reading the Good News Version. And it reads thusly, For if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children. And by the Spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people, and we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared at all with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. May God bless the readers and the hearers of his holy word. May we study it daily and live it as we walk the path of life.
Wow. If that doesn't get your juices and your blood going, I don't know what it's going to take. Hallelujah. He's worthy. And Lord, we lift you up. Amen. Glory. My goodness. Brother Christopher Wilson and the Haywood sisters. Amen. That sound like that sound like a gospel album. Christopher Wilson and the Haywood singers. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, we thank God. Uh, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel it in this atmosphere. Wherever you are, His Spirit is there. And we give God the glory. We're going to keep this mighty praise service going as we give and to a great God. Can we give God a praise that we're able to give to a great God? Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for the privilege that He's worthy to be praised and He's worthy of our investment. And in fact, we've been singing it for years. You cannot be God-giving no matter how hard you try. The more you give, the more he'll give to you. Just keep on giving because it's really true. You can't beat. I wish I had one witness in the ether out there. God's giving. And so we thank God you can go on our church website and you can give online. Click the donation tab. And we'll be glad to receive your gifts. And thank you. Many persons, you know, who are not necessarily members on the roll, but you're giving into this ministry. And we want you to know we appreciate it. You can also mail it in 2521 North Armistead Avenue in Hampton, Virginia, 23666, 2521 North Armistead Avenue, Hampton, Virginia, 23666. And you can also... Uh, uh, just bring it by uh, during the office hours, or you can also uh, use the, um, you can also uh, bring it by today before about 11 o'clock or so, and uh, we will receive it. But thank you for your kindness. And you know what? Um, you have been very thoughtful in your giving, and I want to let you know how much I really appreciate that. You want your church to remain strong, and we are strong. We're Bethel strong. Even in the midst of this pandemic, you've been very thoughtful about considering your church. No matter what's been going on, you've been doing that. And thank you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege and priority and passion for which we give. And Lord, we give other first fruits before we do anything else, Lord. We, we put, pull yours off the top because we want to invest in the kingdom of God. Spirit of the living God, Lord, I pray that you would bless my brothers and my sisters for their faithfulness, Lord. I pray that you would give it back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and even running over shall men and women give to our bosom. We receive that because you promised that. In Jesus' name, we pray together. The church said amen, yo. Amen, amen. God bless you. Again, I'm just so happy to receive you on this Lord's Day, the time of Holy Communion as we celebrate Jesus. Uh, certainly wishing all of our visitors and we have persons, uh, every now and then I get a call, and I get persons who tell me that we listen to the broadcast, so please know how much we really appreciate you spending time with us, uh, even before you go to your service, wherever it is. And so we give God the glory and the praise for that. Pray that this will be a blessing to your spirit. Tuesday night, inspirational Zoom. Uh, Sister Bertha Davis, amen. She's going to lift us up then, so we're looking forward uh, to her. And then uh, don't forget this weekend, June the 11th and 12th, the Portsmouth Richmond Roanoke District uh, Church School and Christian Education Con Convention Convocation this Friday, 6:30, and uh, till uh, uh, on Friday, and then uh, beginning Saturday at 9 a.m. You please register so you can participate fully. Uh, we've sent out the email link, uh, but also you can go to the Portsmouth Richmond Roanoke District website and you can register as well or go to the Facebook page that we have and you can register. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be f absolutely fantastic. We've got uh, activities for every age, and so please uh, consider uh, 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 joining with that virtual church school convention on Zoom. Also, we don't want to forget our Vacation Bible School, amen. Vacation Bible School, uh, June the 22nd to the 24th, and we're going to send out the email link for the virtual uh, Vacation Bible School, and we hope, if everything works out, uh, to have the last day uh, on site, outside. If it works out, if not, we'll let you know. But we really need you to register so we can get the materials 
and the other things that we need uh, so that we can be well prepared. The teachers are getting ready. Everybody's getting ready. The technology committee is getting ready. It's going to be fantastic. And it's, for, it's not just for children. It's for all ages. So we're looking for your uh, participation. Next week, next Sunday, is our high school graduation recognition Sunday. Can we give God a praise? We have three wonderful uh, one, young people, Yasmin Wilson, uh, Daron Robinson Jr., and Layla Hill. Uh, they're going to be here along with some members of their family, and they're uh, going to be giving their graduation speech. Let the church say amen. That is a rite of passage uh, for Bethel uh, young people. I believe they got something to say, so please, you don't want to miss next Sunday as we hear from him. And I just want to say again, Brother Calvin Edwin Evans, want to thank you, praise God for your graduation from Norfolk State University. Uh, and many of you remember Brother Clarence Stevens. Uh, he was a young man who matriculated for, uh, through Hampton University, and we're proud to say that he recently graduated from John Hopkins University with a master's degree. Well, he did that kind of quick. And uh, we just say that, Clarence, if you're listening, we're proud of you. And uh, we pray God will continue to bless you in, in fantastic and wonderful ways. Uh, June 18th, Andrew Dickinson is getting married. Amen. They get married around here, y'all. I've done I've, so many marriages. Amen. I, I just a blessing. And so if you, some of you want to bless that young couple, and so uh, if you can, just contact mom and dad. They'll make sure that uh, that young couple gets that. Let the church say amen. Certainly, we want to uh, uh, lift up, if you want, uh, when Father's Day is coming up. Now, Mother's Day, we really did it up for the mothers. Uh, but Father's Day is coming up. That's right, Chris. Give me a little extra on the fathers. <laughs> But um, on, on uh, Father's Day, as we did for the mothers, uh, if you would like to uh, see the video. Now, I thought the video, uh, the, the, the presentation we did for Mother's Day was awesome. And so we want to do the same thing for the brothers. We don't want to cut you short. And so if you'd like to get the, please contact the church office. And also, if you'd like to give a donation, you can do that as well. But let's not forget all the fathers. Uh, who and men, men who have had an indelible impact in your life. Let's honor uh, the men in our life. Let the church say amen. And, and please, uh, get your COVID-19 vaccine. You can get it everywhere. You can walk down the street and get a shot. Amen. You can get it the same day. There's no excuse not to get your vaccine. I'm talking to AME pastors where the whole congregation uh, they have gotten, they, they know that their congregation has been vaccinated, and they're, so they're just ready for in-person worship, so please do so, uh, no matter where, where I go. Now, you do what you want to do. I've been vaccinated, but no matter where I go, I still got my mask. I don't care where I go, I got my mask. I'm not taking a chance. In the church office, all of us have been vaccinated, but i tell you one thing, we wear masks because we love one another and we want to take care of one another. So please uh, do that. July, June the 15th, 7 p.m., Keisha Wilson doing her initial sermon. She'll be in this pulpit, 7 p.m. It won't be on uh, Zoom. It'll be like you're watching it now. So we want to encourage that young lady uh, and just thank God for what he's doing in her life and in the life of the church. Amen. Let's keep in prayer. Our bereaved families, Valerie Watts, Marcus Smith, Celestine uh, Johnson, uh, Kenosha and Sheldon Williams. Uh, we want to keep in prayer Reverend McCormick. She's still recuperating. Joan Wilson, she'll be skipping and hopping pretty soon. Georgette Chaplin continuing to make phenomenal progress. Uh, please pray for Bernice Whitaker's son, Leroy. Praying that God will strengthen and keep him uh, in the, the days ahead. Uh, Maxine Langhorn, I know you're getting stronger. And we thank God for that. Amen. We're going to ask Brother Christopher Wilson and company to give us another selection as we praise and glorify God. Amen.
Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Even me, Lord. I know how who I am, but Lord, even me. I want to testify like David. David said, One thing I have desired after the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. We're having tough times these days, but I want to echo David one more time. He said, I would have fainted unless I'd believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and God will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that beautiful rendition reminding us uh, that God is in the blessing business. That song was a prayer. I said, Lord, just let some of your drops, let some of your blessing fall on me. And you know, sometimes you can't be bashful. You just need to go on and ask God for what you want. Lord, bless me, Lord. Ah, Lord, fill us, fill us until we want no more. Heavenly Father, even us, as we stand in the need of your grace and your mercy, Lord, we uh, can't get enough of you. The more we get, the more we want. We have a deep abiding and insatiable yearning for you. Cannot be quenched by, can't not be met by any other thing in the world. Food won't do it. A relationship outside of you won't do it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a connection from you that we desire. Because you said in your word that without me, we could do nothing. And Lord, because we want to do something with our life, we want to maintain our connection. And so, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me, fall fresh on earth, us. Bless this preacher and bless the hearer that we might hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Bless our head, bless our heart. Let us be on one accord as we thank you in advance for the spiritual food we're about to receive. And, Lord, I'm praying that somebody who may not know you in the pardon of their sin will cry, what must I do to be saved? It doesn't matter if they're in here, it doesn't matter if they're in the, uh, on the internet waves, Lord, we pray that they'll cry out, what must I do to be saved? It's in Jesus' name we pray together. Amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Oh, God is so awesome. He is just so awesome. Romans 8 chapter, uh, verse number 13. Amen. Thank God for his word. Thank God. It's a lamp and a light unto our pathway, and we thank God he's given us his truth. The text declares, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the spirit, do mortify, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, you'll live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage to fear, but ye have received, hallelujah, the spirit of adoption, Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Glory, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of that shall be revealed in us. Bethel, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Beloved, if you'll pray with me for a few moments, if a sermon must have a theme, let this be it. Help, Lord, I'm uncomfortable. Help, Lord, I'm uncomfortable. Uh, beloved, uh, Hope you don't forget this message because you're going to need it in your life. Let the church say amen. Uh, we learn a lesson from nature 
that I believe that helps us. Every now and then, a brother likes to look at uh, uh, National Geographic. That's a good channel to watch, nice and wholesome. Uh, and we examine the sea life and the life of the lobster. If you're hungry, shame on you. A lobster is a, is a, is a soft creature under a hard shell. And how does the lobster grow under a hard shell? Because the shell doesn't grow along with it. When the lobster starts growing enough and it is uncomfortable in its current shell, it undergoes, it goes to a formation of rocks in the water, sheds its shell, and starts growing a bigger shell. And this process is repeated several times in the lobster's life. The discomfort that the lobster feels in its own shell when it has become too small drives it uh, to grow and to start growing a new and bigger and more comfortable shell. And the same is true with us as humans. When we feel discomfort in our situations, we need to use it as a driving force to grow and build a new shell, a better life for ourselves. And Bethel, I believe that our lives, if we're going to move forward, uh, for us to grow as Christians, God knows like that lobster, he has to make us to be uncomfortable. And in fact, we cannot grow if we get too comfortable. Uh, some of you have been in the military, Brother Elliot. You went to boot camp for a period of intense training to make you an effective soldier. And you knew that when you went to boot camp that your comfort was not on the drill instructor's mind. Uh, you, they didn't care about how you felt about getting up early. They didn't care about you being comfortable with the buzz cut you received. They didn't care about the military fatigues that were often hot and uncomfortable. They didn't care if you liked the food. In fact, sometimes they didn't give you long to eat. They didn't care that the hours were long and hard. They didn't care that your feelings might be hurt. They knew that they, you would be pressed to your limits, and that's what they wanted. They didn't care about what you thought about them because they knew that being uncomfortable with the training would actually help you to grow into what you needed to be. Am I right, Dran? In sports, coaches, if, it's their, if they're a good coach, they are not concerned with your comfort and convenience. They know they have to press the limits of your endurance to make you the best player. As our parents, as parents, if our children are going to grow up strong and productive, we've got to make things uncomfortable. Oh, Lord, help me. At times for our children, because if the truth be told, babies want to be carried because it's comfortable, but after a while, you got to make that big old baby start to walk. Come on, can I get a witness in here? Ah, children want to eat what they want, but after a while, you got to let them know, you're going to eat what I put on the table. Thank you, Doretha Turner. I submit to you today that God, and I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's, it's helping us. God is not overly concerned with your comfort and your convenience and I know that some of you don't want to hear that and it's feel, your feelings are hurt and it might mess up some folks' mind. But the reality is that like the military, God, listen, is trying to produce some soldiers for his army. And in fact, like that a lobster, God has to let us, allow us to experience discomfort so we can get rid of that shell that does not fit us anymore. And I submit to you today, if you're in a place in your life that you feel uncomfortable, inconvenience, and feel like you're just going through, please know that something good is going to come out of your experience. Turn to your neighbor and say, something good is going to happen to me. It's a beautiful text in Romans 8. Come on now, I feel God in here that's going to bless your spirit. Much of this chapter ah, deals with the awesome work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. In fact, Paul says the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. This lets us know that the Holy Spirit is our witness that we belong to God. And let me tell you something, that when you're a child of God, it comes with privileges 
and responsibility. Everybody wants the privileges, but not everybody wants the responsibility. Ah, uh, the blessing that I'm getting ready to share with you for, is for people that have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And the blessing is if you've got a relationship with Jesus, no matter what you go through, God has this great promise in store for you. It pays to know the Lord because the Lord will take care of his own. And then Paul says one of the blessings of being one of his children, that he said that we are heirs. Uh, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. So, uh, and he said, if we suffer with him, we'll be glorified together with him. And since we're his children, uh, not just any kind of children, but children with a rich daddy that has left us glory with an inheritance. We have a daddy, heavenly father, that has so much in store for his children. And unlike earthly families where it seems as though some people get left out of the inheritance, God is so wonderfully rich that everybody in the family of God is going to be blessed to overflowing. Do you have an overflowing place for an overflowing God? He says that we are joint heirs with Christ, and therefore that means that we are of a royal lineage and that we rule in the kingdom of God with him. Oh, I feel God in here. That's why you ought to know that when you walk around, you're not just anybody, but you are royalty. And one thing that you got to understand, listen, about royalty, it's not just about getting blessed. Being royal in the kingdom of God is not just about getting material possessions. Being royal in the kingdom of God is about service. Uh, if you don't believe me, look at the British royal family. They got more money than most of us has ever dreamed, except for Reverend Shackelford. And uh, <laughs> she looking at me funny over there. Uh, uh, but they realize that because of who they are, in spite of all the money they got, that everybody in the family has to render service. So that many of the young men in the royal family join the military. So many in the royal family are constantly doing charitable work because it's not about being served, it's about serving others. Being royal in the, is, is in the time that this text was written is different than some people think today. A king was prepared to go through excessive and extreme training. And many of those kings had to go to war, Lord help me, uh, with the rest of the men in battle. I wonder what kind of presidents we would have if the presidents had to go to war with the troops. Lord help me in here. They had to learn how to live in the fields and endure hardships like every other soldier. And during those times, the king didn't just sit back at home, but he had to swing a sword and a spear like everybody else. It was unheard of for a king not to go to battle. He grew up trying to endure hardship so that he could be respected in an effective manner. And I stopped by to tell you that just because, ah, Lord, help me, that you are part of God's royalty does not mean that you are immune from the hardships of the training process. And in fact, the text says, if you suffer with them, we'll be glorified together. It actually tells us that if we are part of his family, we have to uh, understand that suffering comes along with it. Now, I know some of y'all getting ready to turn off the internet, but listen, that check this out. It's still true. Uh, some people are not going to like this because you don't want anybody to rock your boat. Nobody in the Bible, very few people want to talk about suffering anymore. Y'all don't want to talk about what you're going to get from God. But you got to understand that what God wants to do is to produce in us the kind of qualities that make us effective for the army of God. Can I get that witness in here? And I don't care who you are. You are not, if you're really serving God, you're not going to get a free pass on suffering. If you're a soldier, you got to go to boot camp. And if you're in the army of God, you've got to go through some things in your life. And the purpose of suffering is not to kill you, but to make you stronger. And no matter what kind of training you go through, it's meant to put a level of stress 
and pressure on you so that you can handle difficult situations. And God told me to tell you that God, who am I talking to, is allowing certain situations of suffering that you go through because he wants to toughen you up. I know some of you don't want to hear it, but God is tired of these weak Christians. As soon as somebody talk about you, you're ready to quit on God. As soon as somebody backbites you, you're ready to quit on God. God is looking for some soldiers that have the whole armor of God on that when the fiery darts of the wicked one come your way, that you're willing to hold up your shield and say, try to hit me with your best shot. Right. Lord help us. Ah, when you're doing athletic workouts, they never want you to get comfortable doing the same thing because you're not going to make any gains. They keep shifting your workout so your body doesn't get used to the same thing. Can I get a witness in here? It seems as though just when you're getting used to something a certain kind of way, that things begin to shift. And it's really getting on your nerves because sometimes, can we be true, sometimes we just want to chill and be comfortable. Amen tired of all this stuff that comes at me but the reality is you may not see it but the process is making you stronger and if you get too comfortable you'll never grow and, and there's a thing listen are y'all with me today there's a thing in sports where they do exercises to try to throw you off balance they have you do stuff on one leg they have you doing stuff on an exercise ball where it's hard to keep your balance they know they're doing it because they know it don't feel good. They know it's not natural to stand on one leg. They know you hate it, but they know that the exercises leave you unbalanced. It forces you to use muscles that you would never ordinarily use. You, you wouldn't use it. Praise the Lord. God told me to tell you this morning that he's letting you go through some things that's throwing you off your balance. And giving you a workout, not trying to kill you, but trying to work some spiritual muscles that you would have never used unless you were thrown off balance. Wow. Let me tell you something. This pandemic has made all of us uncomfortable, but it has made you Bethel strong. Some of us would have never messed with a computer you would have never messed with a pad. You, would, you didn't know what Zoom was all about. But because you wanted to stay connected with the body of Christ, you went through the uncomfortable procedures of trying to learn stuff that you had no interest in. That's why we're Bethel strong, because God threw some matters that Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. We had to be uncomfortable in wearing a mask so we could survive. Lord, I hate this mask, but I want to survive. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, when shots were available, we took them, even though a lot of us knew the second shot will really put some on you sometime. Come on, can I get a witness in here? All of this that we went through has made us stronger. A lot of people thought that if churches could not meet in person, that the church would have gotten weaker. They, they, they predicted that there wouldn't be no churches around if we couldn't uh, meet together. But what they don't understand, and the devil didn't understand, uh, that this thing that you thought was going to put us off balance is the very thing that's drawing many of us closer to God. Some of us are in Bible study and couldn't spell Bible study. Some of us are closer to God in our prayer life. Life, like we've never been before. God is trying to tell you that this pandemic has caused us to be stronger. Can I get a witness in here? Ah, he says, I like this. I'm getting ready to get out of here. He says that uh, when we suffer, he said, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be, gl share the glory with God. He said, if we suffer, we'll be glorified together with the Lord. You get the glory. God, you, God gets the glory and we share in that glory. When we suffer with Jesus, we know that we can suffer because the stuff we've done, uh, even if we try, even if we messed our own stuff up, God is going to get the glory once he finishes with us. And no matter what the source of the suffering, if you trust God, he has a plan to get you through. Can I get a witness in here? But here's where I want to hang my hat because 
I want you to understand, turn to your neighbor and say glory. So you got to understand when you go through boot camp, you got to understand, ah, uh, Dran, there was one day you were looking for graduation day. I ain't going to always be sweating like this. I ain't gonna, they're going to, there's a graduation day coming. And, and, and Reverend Austin and mom was going to come and see you uh, walk across the parade field in your dress uniform. There's glory coming. I, I got to go through what I got to go through because graduation day is coming. That glory is coming. And Paul said, he said, for I reckon, oh, every preacher loves this, that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory uh, which shall be revealed uh, in us. Uh, he said, I reckon, I calculated. I, this didn't just come up on me. I figured out this thing. Uh, that uh, this, is, this is a hope that uh, the enemy doesn't want you to think that what you're going through uh, is worth it. Uh, the enemy wants to think that you suffered for nothing, that you, what you went through uh, was a waste. Um, in fact, he will use the fact that sometimes, even if we suffered with our own stupidity and stubbornness, uh, and I'm looking in the mirror too, so don't look at me like that, uh, that nothing good could come out of it. Uh, but he says, Paul says, that nothing that I ever went through in life uh, can be compared uh, to the glory uh, that God got coming in my life. I'm going to say that again, that again, that nothing that I ever went through can be compared to the glory that's coming. Think of it like this, the giant old-fashioned scale, a double-sided weight scale. On one side, help me, Chris, you put your suffering, and that's heavy. On one side of the scale, you put the glory that God is going to allow to put out of your suffering. He says that whatever you put on the scale, that the sufferings uh, will never outweigh the glory that God uh, is going to bestow upon your life. Uh, he says so far that it cannot even uh, be compared. Uh, it's not even close. Uh, it's not a tie. Uh, it's not even a ballpark. Uh, he says your sufferings uh, cannot be compared uh, to the glory uh, that is going to be revealed. Uh, when a woman is in labor, uh, she's hurting. Uh, nobody knows how how long is going to last. The husband is there holding her hand, wiping her forehead, patting her back. That's all he can do. He's limited. Can I get a witness in here? When you hold her hand, it doesn't change the pain. It just gives her comfort. But God is birthing something on the inside of you. He wants us to comfort one another that while we go through the birthing process, huh? God is going to bring forth huh? a blessing, huh? a spiritual baby huh? in your life, huh? that when that mother sees that baby, huh? she says, hey, I thank God, huh? even though I went through pain, huh? I thank God huh? for the blessing of my child. Huh? Is there anybody in here, huh? you're going through the birthing process, huh? God promised some stuff to you, huh? and you've been waiting for nine months, huh? nine years. Years, huh? 19 years huh? and it's been a long time huh? and it's been hurting huh? but God told me to tell you huh? that it's worth it huh? for the glory huh? that shall be revealed huh? somebody say yeah huh? look back huh? over your life huh? and think about every moment you suffered huh? think about the hurt and the pain huh? think about the times huh? where you felt like giving up huh? and that's everybody Think about times of depression. Come on, Christians, you get depressed. Think about times of loss, tiredness, heartache, backstabbing friends, being misunderstood, suffered through financial difficulty, lost some jobs. Think about the worst days of your life and the worst losses of your life. Think about those that said that you'd never make it. Put that on your scale. It looks miserable, huh? but God said, look on the other side huh? of your scale, huh? that you're a joint heir huh? with Jesus huh? on the other side, huh? all his grace huh? and his mercy huh? on the other side of the scale. Huh? Think about
about the prayers and the prayers of the righteous. Think about the times that God brought you out. Think about the ways that he made out of no ways on the other side. Think about how he healed your body. Think about he never left you and he never forsook you. And I could go on all day, but when I compare the glory of what God did on this side, I got to thank God. I got to thank God. I got to bless God that God is glorified. Somebody say, yeah. Is there anybody in here? You're going through hell right now, but you got enough faith in your spirit that you can say the best is yet to come. Somebody say yeah. Can anybody say to God be the glory. The next time you go through, say God is going to get some glory out of this. Somebody say yeah. Give God a praise. I got to testify. There was a time when we were going through the building process. Lord, y'all ain't going to talk to me. And it was stressful huh, at times. Huh. Sometimes uh, it looked like huh, we didn't have enough money. Huh. The people were doing all they could. Huh. People were being faithful in their building fund support. Huh. But we needed some more money. Huh. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me in here. Huh. And the building committee, huh, we were stressed. Huh. Come on, y'all talk to me now. Huh. There was a time where we had almost $400,000 worth of steel huh, coming. Huh. But we didn't have the money for it. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me in here, but I'm so glad. Oh, our faith got stronger. We didn't know how God was gonna do it, but we believe somehow. Anybody know got somehow praise? I don't know how God's gonna do it, but he's gonna do it somehow. Somebody say yeah, and I wanna thank God. Those of us on the building committee, our faith might have been down here, but after we built this church huh, with the help of the membership, huh, our faith is up here. Huh? We believe God can do huh, anything that he wants to do. Huh? Somebody say yeah. Huh? Come on, can I testify again? Huh? I remember a time huh, near the end of the process. Huh, we needed about $300,000. Huh, and that the bank said, huh, you're not going to get any more money. Huh? You can forget about it. Huh? But aren't you glad huh, we went down there? I told somebody, I want you to set up a meeting. Set up a meeting with the bank. And somebody might have thought, they told us no. But how many know that God has the last word? Somebody say yeah. And I got to thank God. The Holy Ghost fell up in that room with those bankers. They weren't shouting, but you could feel the presence of God in that room. And after we left, they didn't say anything at that moment. But after we left, we felt good because we believed that God was going to be glorified in the midst of all of this. That's why everybody on the building committee, if you see us praising God like we lost our mind, it's because we've seen God do stuff that nobody thought it would happen. Come on, get God the glory. That's why I will never take praise for this building because only God made it happen. So give God praise. And not only that, but God let us finish the building and have a couple of dollars in the bank. You better give God the glory and the praise. They said, somebody said it couldn't happen. But all I can say, huh, that it nothing huh, compares to the glory huh, that has been revealed huh, to what God has done huh, to his people. Huh. I'm trying to stop. Huh. I'm really trying to quit. Huh. But when I think huh, of the goodness huh, of Jesus huh, and all he's done huh, with my crazy self, huh, with my mess myself up self, huh, my soul cries out hallelujah thank God for saving me say yeah can anybody throw your head back and say to God be the glory to God 
be the glory. God's going to get some glory out of this. I ain't go through all of this hell for nothing. God's going to get some glory. Uh, he's going to get some glory out of this. Come on now. You are a joint heir with Jesus. Let me stop by to tell you, because you belong to him, God wants to let you know that that's a promise. It ain't just me talking. He said the sufferings, the stuff you got to go through, stop trying to escape everything in your life. You can't escape. How do I know? Because Jesus couldn't escape. Some stuff you got to go through if you're going to achieve what God wants you to achieve. What did he do with Jesus? He loved his son. He loves his son. His son in Trinity, in glory, in eternity. And you know what happened? His son had to suffer the indignity of the cross. He had to be whipped. He had to be scorned. That's why we're celebrating communion. But you know, the whole time, that's what I love about Jesus. He talked trash to his enemies. He said, yeah, y'all can kill me. But in three days, I'm going to rise again. He knew he had to go through that period, which was temporary, was going to bring eternal glory, not only for him, but for all of us who love him. So much glory that the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, let me tell you something. It's just how you look at it. I want you to, the next time you run up in a roadblock, you need just to say prophetically, God's going to get some glory out of this. Come on, you need to speak that prophetically. I didn't, I'm not going through this for no reason. God is going to get some glory uh, out of my life in the midst of this. And so I just want to thank God for that. Paul had that kind of relationship that he could talk trash. Look at the enemy. He says, whatever I'm suffering, it's not going to be compared to the glory <laughs> God's going to get out of this. Think about it. Look back over your life. Whatever you went through, you went back to school at an older age. Your family doubted you. They said you'd never be able to do it. You went through some hard times. But look at you now. Look at you now. Look at you now. God got some glory out of that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody, you start, try to start a business. Some people said nobody ever had a business in our family. It ain't going to work right. But watch God. Get some glory. Y'all ain't going to talk to me in here. God's going to get some glory out of this. And we want to thank God in advance that the sufferings that you've been through are not going to be compared to the blessings on the end for you and the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus is saying, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. I want to encourage you today. Paul can say that because he had a relationship with God. He said, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. And because I'm a joint heir, I got a responsibility, but God has got my back. No matter what I go through, God is going to make it work together for my good. That's what it says in Romans 8 and 28, just further down the line. Because we belong to him, he's going to make stuff work out together for good. I want to offer you an opportunity if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. Come on. Get hooked up into the family. Now one thing about this, God doesn't have any favorites. The moment you accept him, you immediately become an adopted child of God. You have the same privilege as somebody who's been in the church 50 years. Oh, they may not think so. Forget them. Bible said, once you accept Jesus Christ, you are immediately become an adopted son and daughter of God. You're an heir of salvation, purchased by God, born of a spirit and washed in his flood, blood. 
I stopped by to tell you, if you accept Jesus Christ today, it'll be the best decision you ever made in your life. I want you to do, do this, not for me, but do this because you love Jesus. You want the glory to be revealed in your life. Pray this prayer with me, wherever you are. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross to save me from my sins. I confess you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I believe that you rose again on Sunday morning. And I confess you as my Savior and my King. I thank you that I'm a part of the family. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give God a praise in here, everybody? Come on, give him a praise wherever you are. That's right, give him a praise. You know what the Bible says, there's more joy in heaven when one sinner repents than over 99 persons that don't need repentance. Heaven is rejoicing over your decision to give Jesus Christ your life. Heaven's rejoicing, I'm trying to tell you, y'all. So, if you've made that decision, I want you, if you could put that back on the screen, to uh, email us, and I'll get the email, and others on the team will get the email, to join Christ Bethel at gmail.com, to join Christ Bethel at gmail.com. Let us know. People are joining that way. Or you can call me, and I'll answer the phone. But not only that, uh, people have been coming by the church. Praise the Lord. They've been coming by. I said, I want to be a part of that church. We want you to be a part of this church. We want to welcome you because the glory is being revealed here at Bethel and among the family and friends of Bethel. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Seal this word. Somebody needs to be encouraged. Lord, somebody is going through, Lord, and they don't understand why they're going through. But Lord, help us to remember our responsibility as Christians. Help us to remember it's not all just about getting, but it's about serving. And that you're preparing us. You're preparing us for greater, to be better soldiers, to be better servants. And part of that preparation, Lord, is that sometimes we've got to go through some suffering. Lord, help us not to look at suffering at the way the world does, like you're against us. But Lord, help us to understand that sometimes we've got to go through so that we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. So, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Bless uh, our bereaved families, wherever they are, whatever they're going through, that you might strengthen them. And that somehow, I don't want to say how you do it, that your glory would be revealed. But we're praying for Donna out in our homes. We're praying for Georgette Chapman. We're praying for Reverend McCormick. We're praying for Leroy in the name of Jesus that he might recuperate and that he might fall back in his mother's arms, Lord, and say, Lord, I thank you for being so good. Everybody on this entire platform, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that any suffering that they may go through, Lord, let remind them it's not going to kill them. It's going to make them stronger. Let me say that again. It's not going to kill you. It's going to make you stronger. God is going to pull some character out of you. It's going to pull some stuff out of you never thought you had. And so we thank you for that, Lord. Uh, we're a stronger church because God used us to build this facility so that when we get to the next phase of the project, Lord, oh, we're stronger. We can, we can handle some stuff now. We thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together, and we thank you for the glory. Come on. Amen. Tomorrow morning, you ought to say, God is going to get some glory out of this. I ain't, I ain't playing. You ought to say God is going to get some glory out of this. He's going to get some glory out of what I'm going through. Amen. I want to ask you to prepare your hearts and minds for Holy Communion. Those of you uh, should have received your uh, communion kits, Reverend Christina, if you'll help Reverend uh, Shackelford, uh, that you would uh, gather your communion elements together. And let's celebrate. This is a part of the glory uh, that's going to be revealed. And here's my prayer. I want you as we prepare, I want you to think about this. Jesus said, as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. So we remember that he, 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 he died and suffered to save us from our sin, but also to heal us for our disease. I'm praying that God would heal and touch your body. Even as we take Holy Communion, that he would touch your body. I'm going to pray that he would touch your body 
that you can literally say with his stripes, I am healed. I pray God will heal and touch your body, touch your emotions, and touch your spirit. Let his glory be revealed in your life. And when God does it, don't you keep it to yourself. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. There's a fountain filled with blood. Amen. bless you ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways draw near in your spirit by faith taking this holy sacrament to your comfort making your humble confession to almighty God in your spirit meekly kneeling as we pray the general confession almighty God We acknowledge and prevail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us of all that is past. Lord, help us and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, the Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to you. Have mercy upon us pardon and deliver us from all our sins confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen. Almighty God unto whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid to cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen. it is very meet right and not bounding duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you O Lord Holy Father Almighty everlasting God therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your holy name evermore praising you and saying holy holy holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee. Heaven and earth are praising thee. Amen. We don't presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are so not so worthy as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you're the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed in his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen, 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 amen. And if you gather your pre-consecrated communion elements we thank God that Jesus paid the price he was broken that we might be whole and because he was broken 
our spirits can be mended together. We thank you that he was broken, that our spirits may be healed and body healed. Take and eat. Remember that his body was broken for thee. As you take the cup and remove the protective what fell, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank you because Isaiah prophesied the New T Testament uh, confirms that this blood has extra special power. And as you take it in remembrance of him, I want you to believe that with his stripes, those, those wounds, those wounds that he allowed could have called down 10,000 angels, but he knew some folks had to be healed in their body and in their spirit. Confess that with his stripes, the blood that came streaming down, we are healed. Take and drink ye all of it to your soul, and body, and spirit's health. Amen. From day to day, blood shall never lose its power. It'll never. As we pray the prayer that our Heavenly Father, our Savior taught us to pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And the church said, Amen. Sing a little bit of that, Chris. Yes, we from among the saints today. He's healed your body. He's restored some stuff. The enemy say couldn't be restored. The glory be revealed in your life. I'm stronger now. I'm stronger now. Give us that powerful doxology. Amen.
but we know that the sufferings of this world cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. God's going to get some glory out of this. He's going to get some glory out of it. Whatever you're going through, he's going to get some glory out of it. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest ruled in the Bible with all of us now and forevermore. And the church said amen, amen, and amen. Have the best week you ever had in your life. God bless you.